Okay. Um, so today uh, we're going to run through what we did for the Four Kingdom Online March into Office event. Uh, my name is Pix Wright in the mundane world, and I am known as Squire, Baroness, Ellis, Riel, and I am presently the monarch of the Kingdom of Golden Vale. I was one of four people who uh, put together the Four Kingdom Online March into Office event. We managed to get one kingdom in each of the time zones of the United States, and that was fun uh, to do, to make sure that all of our teachers and our viewers knew when classes were and what they were doing and all that fun stuff. Um, so I am going to share some stuff with you. All righty. Um, so this was the event page uh, that we had. I created this header and then used this background for all of the rest of the promotional material that I put together. I had our four hail orgies on there and the title of the event. I tried to keep the info on the event page as simple as possible so people knew what, what they were doing and where they needed to go. The very, very important things. And then anything else was a separate post in the discussion portion of the event. So everybody wants to know where to put their attendance because everybody wants credit, the schedule, and the descriptions of the classes because people want to know what's going on. And then just our general intro to the event. I really, really love Google Forms. Um, this one, oh, well, it's actually closed now. Um, but this, I actually had the uh, prime ministers of each of the kingdoms get together and be in charge of because at the time I was just running the event and um, I that was not gonna be my responsibility after the event ended. So that was something I delegated. I said, hey, does someone want to put this together? I have no part in, in this form. But they all took the credits and did them after the event was over. The schedule. We put all of the time zones on the left here and did them in 30 minute increments and then scheduled out our classes. Um, for most of them, or for all of them, it was what it was and by who. I didn't want to clutter this with a lot of uh, details because then your writing would need to be tinier. It's a lot of stuff to put on one page. You want simplicity and for people to easily find the things that they want. So you want them to be looking at the time and where what the class is. This, I color coded it by what platform things were on. It was also important to me to make sure people knew when it was last updated. So we um, kept this last updated image or box up here. And this is just in Google Sheets. It's not, it, it didn't require a whole bunch of programming or planning. It's just, you know, um, coloring a box and typing in a box. And then for class descriptions, it was just a Google Doc, a Google Word Doc. Um, and same thing, if you really wanted to, you could read the descriptions for the class and then see what time the class is uh, happening at. Um, Again, it, all the information in, in one place if you really wanted to. The only thing that you're missing here is links to each place. And uh, Google nicely um, recognizes when you're doing like a heading. So it puts them in a list for you so you can click to it. I wanna know about Crafty Chats on Zoom. There you go, Crafty Chats on Zoom. 
Um, so then if we go into here, this is, um, we had a submission form for people who wanted to teach because we were trying to fill an entire week's worth of evenings of classes. So we wanted a Monday through Sunday uh, evening classes during the week and then classes available all day, Saturday and Sunday. We also needed to make sure we had time for court. Uh, we actually ended up because we were in different time zones. Each time zone started their court at four o'clock, their time zone. So Golden Vale started at four um, and then like moved across the coast, which was nice because that actually meant if you really wanted to, you could attend four different courts in a day. I don't know why you'd want to do that to yourself, but you could have if you wanted to. Uh, for the form, the this was for classes and volunteers. We didn't want to have to make you click two extra places for doing one thing or the other. So if you scroll down, um, you could be interested in moderating and helping with classes, or you could actually run your own class or activity. Um, we also wanted to make sure that activity was part of that because not everybody wants to always take a class, like with the, um, with crafty chats or with bardics, those are those are activities. They're not really classes. And at a normal in-person event, you would also have a class or an activity to do. It's not all just classes and battle gaming. We also wanted to encourage people to do whatever platform made them comfortable. Some people absolutely despise Discord. Why would we make you operate on Discord if you don't like it? And the same with Zoom. Some people don't like Zoom. Or for Bardics, Bardics don't really work that well on Zoom because everybody's uh, refresh rate is a little bit different unless you're doing solo performances. It's, and you set your, um, your audio up properly. It doesn't really come through quite as well as it does on something like Discord. And Discord has other features where you can also um, use like a music bot and make a playlist on Spotify or use a YouTube video as your background music. And also on there, uh, my favorite thing about Discord is that you can change the volumes of individuals. So if for me, Lyndon's mic is too high, then I can actually just turn down hers and I don't have to turn down the volume of everybody else. And if um, I'm having a bad hearing day, I can turn up some people who are talking quieter and I don't have to turn, like deal with the really loud, the people who talk loudly normally. It was also really important for us to make sure that your time zone worked for you. And also in our schedule, we wanted the time zones to be nice. We were looking for availability and this um, function for uh, the um, uh, in forms was actually really nice because you could check box what times you were available. Oh, I didn't want to edit that. Okay, go back. Oh, I'm probably in the edit mode. Um, if you go, there we go. Um, you can actually click like what times you're available only in that time and that it'll show up on the back end. Um, so that was a really fun feature of that. And then we asked for a description of what class or activity or just moderating you wanted to do. When you have a form, it gets sent to, uh, or you can send it to a responses. So going through here, we actually, well, I was color coding when I had talked to people and when I had scheduled their classes and all that stuff. So you can have like, what's the best way to get back to you or to talk to you? Is Facebook your best mode of contact? Is um, texting or email? Whatever works for you. And then it just, all of your questions are still here. So it was easy to um, schedule people and, and see what their classes were. The other way that you can look at those is if you go back into the form, 
you can look at the responses and individual responses. So you can see Alona, uh, you can contact her on Facebook. She has taught and moderated classes. She's interested in moderating and helping only. Um, she prefers to use Zoom. She lives on the East Coast and this is her availability. And that was really, really nice um, to go through and, and be able to look at individually. Um, this is where that schedule links to. And we actually had um, like mock-up schedule and things changed before we actually published it. Uh, this was the original one up here. So the timeline was also something that I would highly stress to anyone who's running uh, an event online. You wanna make sure that you give people uh, a timeline so that you know when you need to have things done. So this, I, it's just in Google Docs and I used the, um, the table format, you know, make yourself a week long and and then however many rows you need and then put in it took a little while to build it but um third call for classes first call for classes um you want to know when you need to confirm your teachers you want to know um when your final check-in with your mods and your teachers are you always want to do those final checks so that you know that someone is is solid on their class and your moderator is still going to be available um, and then when your event is and then also things like posting your complete schedule with the platforms those are things that people are looking for when your event starts coming up the other thing that i did was put all of the information that i wanted um, in one place and that was really important to me so I didn't have to go searching and clicking back and forth between places to look for the information that I was looking for. So I made a simple, the, the ordered list here. The first day of the event, Monday, March 8th. The first class was at 6 p.m. EST, intro to court garb. The uh, teacher was Jocelyn. She was doing it on Google Meet. This was the link for her Google Meet because we were doing so many different platforms, whatever you were comfortable with, we wanted to have all of those links in one place. Um, who the moderator is, and then the, the description for her class. Um, she actually had some problems with Google Meet, so that was something that we just kind of changed as it happened. And we just switched to Zoom. That was really easy. And that was as simple as changing the link that was available on the event page. Um, this kind of thing, um, Zoom and who's Zoom, so is my Zoom, um, and here is the link for it. I actually used Zoom's um, schedule feature, like schedule a meeting feature, and that gave individual um, links to classes. However, when you do that, make sure that you don't have classes that back up one right to another because that second class won't be able to start until you start with that link. Um, there was one, one time during the event that I had scheduled a class and then Crafty Chats on Zoom. And when I originally scheduled it, I only scheduled the class name. So when someone was looking for Crafty Chats, they hopped in and they were like, oh no, I'm in the wrong place and hopped back out and then hopped back in because the link was bringing them back to the same place. And I was like, nope, nope, you're in the right place. That's one of those things you have to look out for. It also displays when you're logging in. If you do that um, or waiting to be let in, it displays what you're entering. Um, but yeah, that and that was just this part Fixing it is is just control paste and and control cut. So cutting and pasting is is pretty easy for moving things around. And speaking of links, 
the other thing that I did during the week um, at the very beginning, scroll, scroll down here. Do, 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 do. That was the very end. Give me the beginning. So this is the first week of March. Um, March 6th was a Saturday and I posted this at 9.15 at night. I was, how was your day today? Are you looking forward to next Saturday? Next Saturday is our event. What are you looking at attending? Here, this is the same green background that we used up at the top at the header. And it says Saturday, it says March 13th, that's got the date on it. And then all of the times and the class names on the side. Um, and then our little event thing here, like if somebody doesn't see that. And then class descriptions can be found here. And I linked the class description doc that's at the top. But then if we go to March 13th up here. So now this was, I posted this on March 13th at nine o'clock in the morning. I set this to auto post. Auto post is going to be your best friend when it comes to anything um, online. Set it to post ahead of time. Set it up the night before. Set it up the day before. Um, like I work nine to four. So I set these to auto post at, oh, well, during the week, it was at two o'clock in the afternoon. And on the weekends, I posted them at nine o'clock, which was before anything started. Uh, nine o'clock my time. But then here in the description of each was the links to every single thing that was happening that day. So if I shared this post to the other kingdoms, all of those links to the Zooms and the Discords and the Facebook um, videos would be right in one spot for someone to click for that day. You don't want people to have to click 8,000 places. Um, the event that is running today there's a website with all of the links and all of the information if you're going to use a website make sure you're using the website if you're going to make if you're going to use just the event use just the event don't make people have to do more clicks or wonder where they're going to find their information um and then we also had um some groups um, that were specifically for certain things. Um, so we had West March having their Dragon Master, and that had a specific group for you to go into and sign up for their Dragon Master and, and submit your entries. And then um, there was also um, the... Uh, the award um the award competition that was going on and there was also going along with the dragon master there was a showcase that you could participate in and all those things had their own individual group that you could go to and clear links to those um basically you don't want people having to click all over the internet to find your stuff and then also because we were recording classes Anything that got posted later, like the Ask a Woman Fighter class, you may want to make sure you link that back into your event. Even if the event is over, people are still going to get those notifications. And you want to make sure that if someone goes, wait, I know I saw that class somewhere. I thought it was recorded. If they look up for Kingdom Online event, they're going to find it because it's going to be in here. Uh, does anybody have any questions? How did you learn to manipulate all this info and organize? Um, a lot of that was, um, honestly, it was a lot of my neurotic tendencies being like, I want all this information in one place. Um, scheduling people uh, because of the different time zones was, I'm going to slide this all into Eastern time zone and 
plan them in my time zone because that's what I'm comfortable with and then you know slide it back to their time zone um, when I message them and uh, I always message them like to start off with hey my name is Pix I'm contacting you about the 4k march into into office event um, I am asking if this day with this time for your class works well um, please get back to me as soon as you can and when they would say yes that works for me then um, I could say okay when you have a chance please give me your class description um, anything that you want to post ahead of time you're welcome to um, and I will let you know uh, do you need a moderator was the other question that I asked um, it's also a very good idea to ask people if they're okay with recording um, and if there's anything any other considerations that they need uh, people they don't get along with um, sensory issues that they have like that's also a conversation to have with their moderator like put expectations right up front how did you knit advantages of each means best communication um so communication was mostly just uh what works best for you so if someone said facebook works best for me i would send them a message and then i also posted um to kingdoms and to the unofficial amp guardian community and to the event itself saying hey i've messaged everyone please make sure to check your other inbox um, for people you aren't friends with messages that's very important um, and then I tried to avoid uh, personally I tried to avoid group chats uh, because I know not everybody likes group chats however I did throw all of my moderators into a group chat just because that was far easier than messaging six different people be like all right here's this um what works for you how did you link the form to the doc uh which form the form to the sheet you mean yeah the uh the survey form to the google doc okay so um if you go into the forms and the responses uh part of that oh i'm trying to show you and i'm not sharing my screen one second. So if you go into the form, that's your little purple rectangle up here, and you hit the responses portion, this little sheet button um, will actually send it to a sheet. Um, if you don't have it, um, if you don't have the sheet already created, it will ask you to create a new sheet or um, to uh, you can actually also send it to a sheet that already exists um, and it'll pop up in a new little tab. Is there any other questions? Thank you. Yeah. Also, if anybody ever wants like a run through yes, of how Google you. works, like Google Docs and the Google Drive are one of my favorite things. Um, the other nice part about this is this is all in one folder named the IK event March 2021. Um, me, myself and the other um, four people can see this. Anything that we put in here, we can all see. It's automatically shared once you share that top level folder. Um, and we can we all have edit permissions. We all have view permissions and everything like that. We can change things. Um, so if I was busy at work, but Fitz knew that he needed to change something in the schedule, he could just automatically go through and change something on the schedule. I wasn't responsible for entirely everything. Um, that's kind of like the nice thing about Google Drive is that you can share it and everybody has their own ability to do anything. Any other questions? Yep. All right. 
So thank you everybody for your quick behind the scenes overview of the March into office for Kingdom event. Uh, and thank you for stopping by today. <laughs>